Hi guys, welcome back to SJB Electronics. Um, first let me apologise about the uh, lack of videos. Um, quite a trying time for all of us really, isn't it, with all this uh, this virus thing going off. Um, the advantage also being though is that we're all stuck inside and uh, for want of a better word, got nothing to do. So we tend to fill this time with uh, things like making YouTube videos and uh, doing things that we, we wish we'd have done a long time ago. Um, fortunately for me, um, I, or unfortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, I, I broke up from work about a week ago now. Uh, today's Wednesday, um, which is actually April Fool's Day, um, the 1st of the 4th, uh, 2020. Um, I broke up a week ago, and uh, we, we were told to give a, uh, our email address to uh, everybody at work, and uh, you know, our echelons from above are going to email us when we decide that we're going to go back to work but it's looking at the moment like we're going to have a minimum time of about three weeks off um, and then we'll return and uh, we'll see what sort of condition the, the company's in and uh, whether we can continue uh, doing things at the same pace as it was just before we left off. Now because I work in the building trade uh, so to speak or the electrical side of the building trade um, a lot of people are actually carried on working quite far into the uh, into the pandemic um, until the company decided that uh, they could take no more uh, and, and work was dropping off to such an extent that it just didn't make any sense to keep uh, keep open. Um, it must be said uh, that uh, we do notice still um, that a lot of people are not sticking to the rules are they? Um, I live on a small close um, and uh, I don't know where people get this into their head with the children that um, it's, like, it's like the summer school holidays for the children they let the children out to play they run all up and down the street gangs four, five, six of them um, I don't think I'll comment any further on that it just makes your mind boggle um, we have had um, a new subscriber to the channel I did notice the other day so uh, just a shout out there to the, uh, the life of an Englishman um, I do watch your channels, buddy, and uh, they keep me entertained for quite a while. Um, welcome to SJB Electronics, and I hope that somewhere in all of this that you're going to find something interesting, just like I do your videos. Um, it's nice to see somebody working with the old stuff um, instead of the new modern stuff. Uh, also, my partner is uh, still working. Um, she's got the... Uh, the fortune to be able to work from home um, so she's still quite busy although she had to, obviously there's times when she's not working and uh, I must say that uh, she's uh, taking over a section of the workshop so to speak um, and uh, anyway I shall flash up a few pictures just to show you exactly what uh, what, what, what my uh, workshop has been taking over by and it's funny feeling that there is a uh, other people in there doing work whilst we're in his bed at night, so having some sleep. Uh, all makes sense in a while when I put the photos up. Um, what I've been spending my time doing is something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. And just to start the story off, a while ago my partner bought me something that I've wanted for many, many years. Um, now, back in the 90s, um, probably probably late 80s, um, I was a big Commodore fan. Now, I was never quite into the Commodore 64. Uh, I, I, I entered later, really, with the 16-bit machines like the Commodore Amiga 500, which was my first machine. Um, but I've always wanted an Amiga 4000. Um, I got one. She bought me one. Um, it worked when I received it, worked absolutely fine, I had a CD-ROM hooked up to it, um, I had a, a, a super-sized hard drive for what the, the machines were actually specified for. Um, but unfortunately at the time we, we had a little bit of an house move, um, we moved for the same area um, of Nottingham, um, but uh, it had to be put into storage for a while. Um, I did have the common sense to remove the battery before it went away um, in its box. Um, but, I've 
one uh, pulling it out and having a look at it. I'm thinking, yes, I'm going to get into my Amiga and do a bit of clean-up work on it, etc, etc. Uh, turns on to find that it didn't work any longer. Um, I did remove the battery, like I say, uh, but unfortunately um, it seemed that it, apparently it had leaked before then. Um, the acid had gone onto the board and caused quite a few problems. Um, I was presented with uh, sometimes a green screen, sometimes a black screen. Um, my lovely machine uh, had stopped working. So I thought I'd take this time while we're off work in the workshop to try and do something about it. Um, also, uh, there had been a certain amount of damage to the case as well. Um, I couldn't keep it in its former glory, but it took me back to uh, the 90s when I always wanted to uh, to have an Amiga of some description inside a PC case. And uh, I think you probably all guessed by now that uh, this is what's happened. Sorry about the reflection at the top, by the way. Um, just a quick story really with this machine. I'm sorry I, I didn't video most of the work that I did on it. Um, I'm sure it would have bored you to death. Um, but um, a lot of recapping, a lot of resoldering, um, a, a lot of hard work. As you can see, the, 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 the rat's nest at the bottom of cables. The, the, machine, the machine's still not finished. Um, but it is operational at the moment in some respect. Um, I've won you a few, a few things that I actually did to the machine. Um, and I must say a big shout out to, 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 to Gadget64, Gadget UK. Um, I watch your videos all the time buddy. Um, and uh, your video some while ago about the Amiga 4000 repair that you did. Um, just made me want to get the machine out. I suppose uh, if your videos do that to people then obviously you're doing something right pal. Um, first thing I had to do was obviously um, find the case that it fit in. So I settled upon a, I'm sorry I don't know the model number of the case, it's an Antec case. Full tower system, um, lots of goodies come with it, like hard drive bays and floppy drive bays and like a gauze effect on the front which I'll obviously I'll show you uh, shortly. I'll, if not I'll add them on the end of the videos but uh, I'll show what me to decide to turn off. Um, I shall pop them up in the corner probably the video somewhere around about here um, and you can probably have a look at the front. Um, I sold all the parts off, off my old case um, on, on eBay as best as I could uh, the front cover which was slightly damaged um, the power supply uh, just went out the window anyway I wasn't interested in keeping that device um, I used a PC power supply to power the actual unit and then I set about doing the repairs on it now a few things so I want to just add to this. Um, when I first tried the machine, obviously my, I had the first problem I had was a green screen. Um, again, watching Gadget UK uh, videos um, and a bit of uh, investigation myself on the internet. Um, it was obviously, it was a sim problem. I pulled the sims out. Um, to say that it was dull was um, an under description. Thank you, Meter. Um, so I decided to clean all the contacts up with a, uh, a fibre pen um, and uh, unfortunately didn't make much difference. Um, I removed the SIM sockets. Um, Some just wasn't quite right. So I don't know if you can actually see these on camera. Um, these are the SIM sockets. Out of, the, out of the machine originally. I could buy these from a couple of places on the internet but the price was astronomical. They had to be changed, there's no two ways about it. I mean I don't know if it's showing up on the camera there. Some of the pins uh, that have been attacked by the acid from the battery I mean, really, uh, even at best, would have been un unreliable if I'd have refitted them. Um, I had to investigate where to get some more from. Now, I will put a link in the description. I did manage to find some, some replacements. The only downside to it was, um, in the Amiga 4000, all the slots do fit, do fit, uh, or, or sorry, all the sims do fit, sort of at an angle inside the machine. 
Um, I couldn't get hold of any of those. Um, so now all my sims, apart from the back one, um, do sit upright, which isn't really a problem. Thank you, motorbike. Um, because I've got all the lovely space in the case now. Uh, I'll put a link in the description, like I said, somewhere down there, and um, you can have a look yourself. They're a fraction of the price of, uh, of buying these things. Um, because as per usual, if it's got Commodore or Amiga attached to it in any way whatsoever, the price uh, just goes sky high, um, which is one of my uh, bugbears. It's, it's quite annoying. If you'd have gone back 10, 15 years maybe, um, machines were going for next to nothing. Um, but now uh, they decide that uh, this interesting retro mania of the, of the Commodore side just seems to have put every, every price through the roof. I'm trying not to skip through all of this too fast guys. Um, I'm going to give you a, a view around the machine now. I do like the machine. I'm a little bit sad that uh, I couldn't keep the original case um, because it does add to the authenticity. But the machine at the moment is working. Um, it has got classic workbench installed. Um, and uh, I'll just run you through a few things that I did actually for the repair. Like I said, inspired by Gadget UK. Um, sorry to keep mentioning your name, buddy. Um, but you are, you're good at what you do. So, uh, just a few things. Right. When I first booted the machine up, it was going random errors. Green screen, black screen, whatever. Um, I decided to uh, to buy Diagram off eBay. And it was about £9, £10 or something like that. Uh, plus the delivery. And upon fitting them in the machine, no go. Nothing changed, nothing happened, couldn't even get a screen up. Um, and uh, where do you go from there? You, you're working in the dark. So I decided to uh, remove the, uh, the ROM chips, the diagram uh, ROM checkers, and uh, check out the sockets. Uh, yeah, they tend to, they, they, there was actually a problem um, with one of the sockets on the ROM chips. Um, removal of the ROM socket cleaning up the board, um, cleaning up the pins, etc, putting it back in, restored some sort of operation, um, but I did get uh, a, a, a screen come up um, that I will add um, somewhere uh, up there to show you what kind of fault I was getting. I don't know what the fault was, didn't understand it, googled it, couldn't get no information on it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, decided to just go to the next step, really. Um, and uh, now that, now that uh, the machine was actually booting, when the original ROM chips were put in, to try and address the, uh, the, the, the random uh, black screen that I was getting. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'll take the side off the, off, off the actual case, um, let you have a look inside the machine, I don't expect anybody to, anybody to be impressed by it, um, but it is in a working situation and uh, maybe we can talk through a few things that maybe um, can help people out uh, if they have any further problems with the Amiga 4000, etc. So I'm going to remove the side cover which uh, isn't fastened on. So I shall take it off and I'll work, work through a few things and maybe you can put in the uh, comments below what you, what you think you would add to the machine um, and, uh, or, or what you change. Um, there might be a few eyebrow raises in this, let's just see how it goes. So I move the side cover. And there she is, the Mega 4000 desktop board. Um, a few additions. Okay, so what we'll walk through here, right, I'll zoom you in on the machine if I can. Uh, let's get the remote. Okay, you can see there. Now, obviously, um, as you can probably tell by, by by the way it's all outlined in the case, the original uh, steel plate that the Amiga motherboard is fixed to um, are retained. Okay, I've used that to fit across the width of the machine. So underneath this section here is actually the original steel plate, which allowed me to keep all the original connectors in the back 
allowed me to keep all the original connections as there was without having to cut and drill holes in a PC case. Um, now, I have a, a video card um, that is going to drop into the Zoro connector here. Okay, but believe me, that still fits. There's plenty of room in the back. If I need to remove this board, I can actually disconnect um, the screws from the motherboard, slide it back, and it will pull out. So there's no issues there, which means it can still be expanded as, a, 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 as an Amiga 4000 should be. Um, my fir my first, first problem was um, getting the, the keyboard and, and uh, sorry, the, the mouse and keyboard mouse and joystick connections to the back. Now, so what I use on that is I bought these connectors. Um, so we can get you in any further on that. These connectors off, uh, off eBay and use the pump cable to take them back down to the board, which you'll see they slide into the bottom side connectors there. They work fine, not a problem. Um, my, uh, if you can see the side there, that I was talking about the memory. You will notice that that the first slot there is laid back. The next four slots are standing upright. These are the new connectors. Like I said, I will put in the description below where I brought them from. They fit perfect for the, uh, the 72 pin sims. Um, I forget how much memory I've got in there at the moment. I think it's about 14 megabytes in there. Um, and then you've got uh, your 2 mega bill, of course, um, which does allow, because it's the way it's situated, it does allow for a double sided uh, sim socket to be put in. Uh, sorry, sim to be put in. Now, um, just a few other things. This processor board gave me no end of problems. The edge connector at the top, terrible. Um, didn't want to remove it, so um, I cleaned it as best as I could while it was in there. They just tend to be um, a slight bow in the connector for some strange reason. I don't know why. I'll show you the picture um, somewhere on screen. Um, but it's how it just seems to be. It's been recapped. All the contacts have been cleaned. They're all nice and shiny. Um, the bulb was put back in. And that seemed to, to stop any any more faults developing or any faults that were actually on this board. So I've recapped everything on there, which, believe me, was quite difficult, especially around about this area. Um, as anybody who's on the motel, you're getting in there. It's, it's quite difficult. Um, a lot of the contacts were dull. Um, so a lot of the chips have actually been resoldered, reflowed. Um, mainly by drag soldering. All the audio section of the uh, of the board's actually been recapped. The clock, believe it or not, although there's a lot of acid damage around here, um, is actually still working. 2032 battery fitted, absolutely perfect. Now. If you can see it there guys, CF card, absolutely fantastic, buy them on eBay, not too expensive, um, we'll also put in the links below, um, take all the legwork out there, they haven't do it all yourself, now I have booted up Win uh, UAE and, and done my own cards etc etc, uh, but just to have one that's got everything on it done by somebody else has done all the hard work for you to push into the machine um, is it, absolutely fantastic now at the moment like I said I'm using a classic workbench on screen um, I will put uh, some screenshots of uh, my screen on there um, toward, probably towards the end of the video um, and let you see some operation uh, of, of, of the stuff that's on there now I am using, as you probably noticed, a PC power supply with the uh, connector adapter that come from Amiga kit. 
I also have the uh, Amiga kit uh, IDE adapter that allows you to add more devices to your IDE port. I've yet to install the, uh, the CD-ROM. Um, using a buffered inter interface on the back for the video. Which I'm trying not to knock around too much. Uh, you can just about see it there. <coughs> I do actually have a couple of these. Um, one buffered and one not buffered. That at the moment is not the buffered one. Um, and uh, of course, uh, like I said a minute ago, I am using the PC power supply. So if we can just get it down here to see where it is. There it is, guys. Now, you're probably wondering what these two LEDs are for. It's a 5 volt. 12 volt rail off the power supply. When I was working on the machine, I just wanted some indication that the actual rails were up, um, and it just seemed at the time that though the side has got a uh, a side case that is see through, it actually does look quite nice. Um, if I leave them in, just give me a bit of ambient light. Might leave them in, we'll take them out. I don't know. Okay, what else can I add about the machine? Oh yes, now a lot of you probably would be eyes and say what at this. Um, a lot of you think it's probably think it's probably fine. I don't know. Now I am limited for space in the workshop. I do want to keep the machine in the workshop. I do want to do stuff on it. I don't want to just upgrade it and get it in full working condition back to its former glory and then just leave it there sitting in the corner waiting for more problems to arise. So. What I decided to do is to add an audio section to the actual machine. Okay. Now I did have some uh, some old uh, Amiga speakers that I actually remember using them back in the day. And if I can put my hands on one of the cases, maybe you might serve a few bells with you guys. Okay, well they're no longer them, they've been broken down. And it's now inside the machine. It's hidden away inside here. You see these two bolts? It's like a heat sink for, for the IC. Now, of course it's not very powerful, it's powerful enough. I did fit speakers into the front. I couldn't get the separation for obvious reasons. Um, but I have fit two speakers in the front. But of course, if anything ever disappoints, we've still got the uh, the out signal there if we decide to plug it into a bigger amplifier. So it's not a permanent fixture as has to be used. Unplugging these at the back here will simply disarm the actual audio amplifier inside and you can power it into your full-blown stereo or, or whatever you require. Um, a, a few more things that I wanted to say about it. If you look at the front of the machine, just to give you an idea, if I can get the machine around for you to have a look at, you will notice there is the on-off switch. Had to be switchable, can't be a momentary contact switch because obviously the Amiga doesn't uh, doesn't approve of that. Um, normal on-off switch, I'm going to have to mark volume controls. Now if I just power up some music for you guys, you'll probably see then exactly what I'm talking about. I am using Classic Workbench at the moment, so we'll just power up a demo. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's try a game. an AGA game and let's try Agony. If I can find it, some nice music on it. AGA games. Yeah. Let's 
try that cheek. I don't know why you guys are going to pick up the, uh, the sound on this, by the way. But we'll give it a go. Once the Amiga stops doing, starts doing its thing. So these potentiometers do have a midpoint setting, like a little notch that comes out on them, which is just seems to be the front background noise, not going to blast anybody ears off, that seems to be what you can have. Let's give it a bit more volume. It's now running through the Banshee intro sequence. So we'll just back that off again. Okay, and we'll quit the game. So, I don't know what more to add to this uh, thing. I'll, I will put some screenshots uh, on the end of the video for the work that's actually been taken out on the machine um, with some little captions just to uh, let you know what I've done. But this is the Amiga 4000 in my Antec case as it is. Um, I will add more information to the end of the video if anybody wants to know any more and maybe as I'm working on it next time I'll, I'll include you guys and, and we can go through a few things together. I'm no Amiga expert, far from it believe me, um, but I do enjoy tinkering around with this. Um, I will, my next project will obviously be to uh, wire up the CD ROM for the, for the front. I am going to put uh, a few screenshots of everything of the actual machine um, like I said, at the end of the video, so you can see the whole unit rather than just the zoomed in and the mess of my desk and everything that comes with it. I, again, I, I want to apologise for not making any videos. Um, I will make more. I mean, obviously, if this uh, if this isolation thing keeps up for much longer, there will be more videos coming along and we can take it from there. This is just a rough, rough video, guys, so uh, please don't uh, kill me in the comments. It's uh, just to keep something up there that, uh, you know, that I'm all well and I I'm surviving as it is um, and uh, the, the channel's not dead. Um, it's a bit off the cuff, this, this subject. Um, it's not uh, my, my normal sort of thing that I do on here, um, but uh, it's something that I wanted to do and I thought, why not include you guys in on it? So uh, feel free to subscribe. It will make me feel great. Um, if, uh, if you want more Amiga videos or things like that then just give me a thumbs up let me know in the comments below if you want me to do some more some more Amiga stuff I sincerely apologise for not including you all in the repair section of it um, but there will be more videos added to this um, just talking through certain sections of what I did and the difficulties that I had um, and uh, where you can get certain parts from to deal with things and yeah I, I will be uh, tidying that, uh, that mess up down there um, I don't really like seeing it and uh, I'll probably just group it all up in some sort of loom and we can take it from there but I do want to identify all the connections on the bottom so if we have to add anything later um, then I can uh, I can wire straight to the terminals without having to get my meter out every time I sort it out. Um, as you probably gathered at the PC power supply I think this is a, a 750 watt which is way over the top for what an Amiga requires it, but it will allow me to add more and more and more uh, things to uh, to this case um, and uh, maybe we can uh, do it together so thanks guys um, please subscribe if you can uh, let's uh, in this time of uh, of everybody uh, suffering and being stuck inside and hopefully all, all, all your, your relatives and friends etc are all, all getting through this okay and all fit and well um, but I will be making another video soon as I keep saying, I keep repeating myself, um, but it's been a long time guys, just keep up with me, um, and we'll go through things together, maybe we can all prove, pull through this, look back on these videos and say, well we got through it, um, here's on to another year, maybe 2020, 2021 will be a lot better, because I think most of this year is going to be taken up with this, uh, with this virus thing, I do sincerely think that um, it's not the end of everything, obviously they're trying to hardest to develop a cure and 
things like that but um, the main thing is keep safe guys um, please hang on to the end of the video to show some screens of, of the problems that I had with this machine um, and so you don't miss out entirely on, on the work that's been done um, and what the machine looks like now um, and just uh, if you want to add anything, you want to think I can add anything to, to, to the case or anything, um, then please feel free. I mean, I know the first thing people are going to say to you is your hard drive LED, um, where's your power LED, etc, etc. I have thought about that. Um, I do know where the connections are on the board, etc. Um, I'm just wondering the cosmetics of it and of how to fit it. So following this will be, will be uh, some, some pictures of, of the actual machine, the front. See what, see what you think, let me know what, what you think that you'd do and where you'd put the LEDs and what kind of LEDs you put on them, what sort of LED holders, etc, etc. I'm open for comments guys on that, so please, please do. Um, and before I go, another shout out. Uh, is it Retro Sengo? Um, fantastic get mate. I, I don't know where you get the money from to buy all them uh, Amiga stuff, but to me it's, it's like being in heaven. Um, so keep up the good work, pal. Your, your, your happy attitude just helps everybody through every day and like I said everybody be safe this is ending my rant this is ending my, my, my waffle um, be safe be good look after each other and I'll catch you all soon goodbye